Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be talking about the Jason Whitlock roll call controversy because Jason Whitlock is, you know, of Blaze TV. He's a Blaze TV personality, runs the Fearless podcast, and is also a YouTube channel as well. He has a Christian men's conference with a Mormon speaker, and that's a controversy, not just apparently for Jason Whitlock, but also for Vody Bauckham, who is the big ticket headliner for this men's conference. And, you know, who should really bear the responsibility for this type of controversy? Should Vody Bauckham be at the conference in general? These are questions I want to weigh in on as we uh, dive into Jason Whitlock's response. But first, I want to let you know Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at evangelicaldarkweb.org. And we have a Patreon-like system, all linked in the description below. But the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast. If you are new, uh, Patreon-like subscribers get bonus articles, bonus content, and stuff like that. But the least you can do is like and subscribe. So with that said, uh, Jason Whitlock addressed this controversy on his show in the most recent episode. And just to say up front... I think Jason Whitlock bears the responsibility for this controversy. I don't blame Vody Bauckham for speaking at a men's conference, at a Christian men's conference. I blame Jason Whitlock for having a Mormon there. That's my take on it. We're going to hear a couple other people get name dropped. Spencer Smith specifically is going to get name dropped. And also Protestia in the second clip. And then I'll, I'll talk more about, you know, from a discernment blogger, uh, media perspective i want to talk more about this story in that section but that's just where i'm at up front i do not like glenn beck i do like jason whitlock i occasionally watch his show uh not every episode but when he has a good show he has a good show uh but what can i say i'm not a caitlin clark fan so anyway here we go i have to answer that question not in any way Am I going to smear and or back off of inviting Glenn Beck to roll call? It's clear. The questions have made me say, what are we missing here? What have I not done? What have I not explained to you all about the fearless movement and what we're doing and what I'm doing with this show? And I have to plead guilty because part of my philosophy, what I tell people all the time about effective coaches and effective leaders, they find new ways to repeat the exact same message day after day after day after day after day. And I foolishly sit here and think, well, I'm doing that. Everybody knows exactly what I'm doing because I talk about it every day. And it's clear everybody does not know what I'm doing because of the feedback I'm getting from people that I respect and I know are with me. I'm going to name a couple of these guys, but there's been more. But these are the two that I personally reached out to. I was like, I can't question these guys. These guys are on my team. They're supporters of this show. One of them is a young kid named Christian Bezak. He came to roll call last year. He stays in touch with me. He did the Donald Trump impersonation at the, uh, on the Friday show. This guy's got my back. And he's questioning me like, hey, Jason, how, how can Glenn Beck be speaking at roll call? He's a Mormon. And so I got on the phone and I explained it to him. And then Spencer Smith, a minister who's been on Tennessee Harmony, he reached out to me over Twitter, over DM. Like, hey, what do you know about Mormons? And you got Vody Bauckham and, and Glenn Beck is speaking. And Spencer and I have been on the phone a couple of different times because I know this guy has my back and he has my best interest. And if, if people like this are confused about what I'm doing, clearly I have not done my job and explained to you all in enough detail about what I'm doing. And so, yes, Glenn Beck is a Mormon who I enthusiastically invited to roll call to talk about history. Glenn Beck is the best historian in the media that I know. So I, I got to pause right there because that is just a terrible claim. Glenn Beck is terrible on history. Very boomer con post World War II consensus view view of history. Uh, it's just not accurate to say that he's the best historian in media not even the best historian at Blaze TV. Come on, Oren McIntyre is a much better historian. So let's be real about that. Glenn Beck, he's inviting Glenn Beck to talk about history 
and Glenn Beck isn't good at history. And I remember doing the video, you know, that I was on John Harris's uh, live stream, where we were talking about the video that um, where he had James Lindsay on, and he was trying to make a World War II analogy, and it was just so cringeworthy. This guy's not good at history. Uh, just come on, Jason. Come on. But that's why he's invited there. So that actually doesn't help. Like Glenn Beck, my impression is he's like nominally Mormon. But he's like full cringe in other areas. So that was actually to me a greater objection to having Glenn Beck there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll let him finish. And he will be at Roll Call to talk about history. Glenn Beck is one of the best people I've met in the last four or five years. This man has been a great friend to me and a great coworker. Glenn Beck and his team lend me Glenn Beck's platform and audience every Thanksgiving and Christmas. How many? So I end the uh, first clip there because he kind of goes on into his relationship with Glenn Beck, which isn't really germane to the broader discussion because to me, it doesn't make Jason Whitlock look better. It makes him kind of look like he's compromising his real, you know, a, a Christian witness because of a relationship that he has with a pagan. And that's really what Mormonism is. Mormonism is probably further away from Christianity than even Islam is because their origin stories are exactly the same. But Islam is definitely a lot more monotheistic than Mormonism is. Bit of a hot take, but that's kind of how I feel. But, it, it, you know, it's kind of like Wahhabism is to Islam as, you know, or as uh, Mormonism is to the United States. So, that's our uh, little bit of a Mormon lesson for today. Uh, the second clip is where he gets into the discernment bloggers and he talks a lot about Vody Bakum and the prestige of the event that he's thrown. So I want him to talk about history because he's more than qualified. If you look at who I've invited to roll call, I've invited Vody Bakum to come talk from a religious perspective and deliver us a sermon that edifies and allows all of us to tap into the emotions, the thought processes, whatever it would take to get us as men to get into the mindset of sacrifice. If we want things to be better, if we want things to improve, we as men have to be willing to sacrifice. And I don't know anybody that can deliver a speech, a sermon from a biblical worldview about the need for men to sacrifice than Vody Bakum. So if I've, I've invited and we've paying for Vody Bakum to come here and talk to us from a religious perspective. So it is worth noting, I know a little thing or two about the Christian, about Big Eva in general. Vody Bakum's not a cheap speaker and he kind of made reference to that just now and i have a theory about you know how financially sound that this conference is going to be later in the video that i'm going to share in the third clip but vody bakum's you know he's a high-end speaker by the way so vody bakum you know i don't blame him for taking this gig i i believe protestia takes issue with vody bakum taking this uh, speaking role. But to me, Roll Call represents a very ripe mission field. These are men who are actually seeking, theoretically seeking God. They are theoretically seeking to do the right thing. And then Vody Bakum can preach the gospel and show them the way. And, you know, let the Bible show them the way. So I... I don't. I have no issues with uh, Vody Bakum for going to this conference. I'm just going to say that up front, and I I'm gonna let him continue. I read a piece uh, in Protestia. I think is the name of it, attacking me. Oh my God! Whitlock's invited a Mormon 
and that uh, and Vody Bauckham is speaking and how dare Whitlock and how dare they and oh my god this is embarrassing for Vody Bauckham this is embarrassing for John Cooper who, the lead singer of Skillet the the great Christian rock band and artist right. and when I read this it tore me up I'm like oh my god they're accusing me so you shouldn't be saying, oh, my God, I, I, I just got to be clear about that. It is cringeworthy. I cringe more at that than F-bombs. That, I believe, is a biblical take. So he needs to work on that. Just going to be very clear. So Protestia ran a story and apparently got to Jason Whitlock. Good for Protestia. Uh, but anyway, they ran that story. And I got to say... I, I wouldn't have run the story in a way that attacked Vody Bauckham. I've been waiting to kind of weigh in on the issue, and I guess this is my chance to weigh on the issue now that Jason Whitlock has redressed the issue. But to me, I have no issue with, you know, Vody Bauckham or John Cooper or the other Christian teachers that are there. I do have an issue with Jason Whitlock for bringing Glenn Beck on there. Because, I, you know, first of all, Glenn Beck isn't good at history. And it disrupts from the Christian message. And right here, he's about to explain the bad language in the program that makes it seem like he's embracing Mormonism as just another branch of Christianity. Of putting Vody Bauckham and John Cooper and these other people in harm's way. I love Vody Bauckham. I'm a supporter. He's the best thing going right now for, for me in my journey. The, the stuff that he preaches. Again, we don't agree on everything, but this man can preach the word. And, and, and I'm being attacked. And, and again, I'm sorry for personalizing it because I'm not a victim. Clearly, I con, con, uh, contributed or created this level of confusion by not being crystal clear. And I had people question me about what's written on this flyer and billboard, and I wanna read it to you. What I wrote, these are my words. Jason Whitlock and John Rich believe that the best way to close the divides tearing apart America is to bring men together under the umbrella of worship, reverence, and song honoring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Instead of celebrating Pride Month, Whitlock and Rich have invited their friends to Rocket Town in Nashville on Saturday's June 1 for Roll Call, an annual men's summit designed to inspire men to put aside their superficial differences and serve our shared creator. Jason and John invite you to join them for a magnificent day of fellowship. Visit fearlessarmyrollcall.com to reserve your spot. So I'm going to let him finish, but just on the, off the bat, our sh serve our shared creator. And putting aside their superficial differences and serve our shared creator. Mormons and Christians do not have superficial differences. We do not have a shared creator. Oh, we do in a cosmic sense, but not in our beliefs. Obviously, everyone has a shared creator because God, there's only one creator of everyone and everything. But Mormons don't believe in the same God. So what I've been questioned about, I chose the words, close the divides, and I did this intentionally. And, and it, it's a mistake on my part. This is again where I say I'm not being clear. And then I chose the words, uh, put aside their superficial differences. This is where, again, I blame myself for not being crystal clear. But I'm thinking everybody understands Mistakenly, this is arrogance on my part. Everybody understands what I'm talking about. Do they watch the show? What is my most passionate issue? And again, I need to remind people and I need to talk about it more often because it's on me. I believe the tearing apart of America all comes down to the racial divide that has been created in America. 
Racial idolatry is at the root of what is destroying America. Now, that is Jason Whitlock's belief, and, you know, he's welcome to it. I don't necessarily agree that that's the number one issue that's trying to tear apart America. You know, at the end of the day, uh, black people represent 13% of the population, and, you know, a lot of white states have a huge, have serious problems, but... I get it. That, that's his thing, but it's not clear in the messaging. And, you know, I, I give Jason Woodlock credit for acknowledging that. But at the end of the day, I don't see how Glenn Beck is useful in helping to bridge the racial gap. I, I just think he's corny and cringe. But Jason Woodlock clearly disagrees. But anyway, a conference that's trying to point people back to God, I, I just... You, you can't really have a Mormon there. So here's a third clip. And this is where I think this conference isn't as profitable as Jason Whitlock would like it to be. And I'm not against conferences making money. Obviously, it's pretty expensive to book Vody Bauckham. It's pretty expensive to book all these people. And all the other accom accommodations that they have to do. But it seems like they might not have broken even just yet. So here's clip number three. I, I, I'm looking at the roll call event. I'm like, hey, look at all this work we did. And, and, and people are lukewarm. And I'm like, well, what's going on? I got music. I got food. I got, I got, I'm not going to call it because, again, I, I don't want to embarrass Vody and I don't want to have to, uh, I don't want to, because there's a lot of great people preaching the gospel. John MacArthur, we'd love to have him. But, but Tony Evans, we'd love to have him. A bunch of guys we'd love to have. But we got Vody Bauckham. This is the gold standard. He's right there with the best out there doing it. John Cooper, the, the skillet. The, the, they've been making music for decades, crushing it. This man's done hopped on board with Roka. We're put, this is an all-star team. Jeffrey Steele is one of the greatest country music songwriters and, and a devout Christian. We're putting together an all-star. And I'm like, and people are lukewarm? I'm doing something wrong because God's given me all the tools. And, and then I, was, I got the best historian in the media, in Glenn Beck. Bruh. What's going on? I haven't been clear. And I haven't explained to you all what the strategy is here and why we've chosen this strategy. And, and again, I'm not playing victim. But so that is the end of the uh, clip. And part of it seems like, you know, maybe he, he strays, a, strafes the line between blaming the audience for not buying enough tickets for roll call and taking personal responsibility for it. So he kind of goes in between, in my opinion. Uh, says that the messaging's bad, but, you know, we have all the tools. It's like, no, you put a Mormon in a Christian men's conference. That's why your sales numbers probably aren't where you wanted them to be, despite the fact that you booked an all-star team. Now, Glenn Beck undermines that all-star team. It creates a conflict for many professing Christians to go to a Christian men's conference where there's going to be a Mormon speaker. Jason Whitlock needs to acknowledge that. And to some degree, he has acknowledged that, but he's not applying the real solution to that. Is to not have a Christian men's conference with a Mormon speaker. So, maybe next year Jason Whitlock will have an all-star lineup without someone who's going to unnecessarily turn people away. But, to me, I think that's been a major issue within Christianity, or a lot of Christian media personalities, is their affinity for bringing Glenn Beck on where he doesn't belong. Glenn Beck didn't belong in the nefarious movie, Steve Days. That was a bad idea. I think it dropped the movie an entire letter grade on its quality. Glenn Beck doesn't belong at a Christian men's conference, Jason Whitlock. That was a bad idea. 
it undermined your mission. It undermined Steve Dace's mission, I would argue. And it undermined Jason Whitlock's mission. So those are my hot takes on that issue for now. Maybe they're not that hot. But anyway, this is the Evangelical Dark Web. Uh, if you like this com kind of content, le you know, drop a like and subscribe on your way out. Let me know what you think about what I think. Stay based. Christ is king. And we will catch you on the next one.